A warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. Yesterday we had looked at uh, the autocorrelation function, the power spectral density and uh, how are these two quantities related. And in the end we had demonstrated this uh, interdependence using MATLAB and uh, shown to be precise this code and looked at these plots. So, this was the real value of the power spectral density and this was the correlation and uh, we said that uh, the absolute value of the power spectral density remains constant. But uh, actually if you see here the real part of the power spectral density is varying like a sinusoid which is because the correlation function is essentially a time shifted impulse at uh, n equals 20 and here it is 20 or here uh, we see that this is at lag 0, but MATLAB does not have a way of uh, knowing when is the impulse at uh, lag 0. So, it always treats this first point as lag 0 and because of that you get the power spectral density as a sinusoid. So, if instead I take the first sample and then try to plot the power spectral density, we see that uh, the power spectral density is almost constant across uh, around 1 and the correlation is so. I will just sub remove this 20 here, I will just do this and so the power spectral density remains almost constant around 1 and this is around 0. So, actually what I will do is I will plot both in the semi log y scale for uh, to give a feeling. So, this is this won't change anything actually and this is in the semi log y scale so better still so uh, what we can do is we can possibly increase the number of samples to say 500 this would take 5 times the time and we'll see so 1 2 and uh, by, this will come up soon so this has come up so you see the power spectral density is now again close to 1 and this is close to 0. So, actually 100 samples was good enough and make these 500,000 samples and that should be helpful. So, see the variation of power spectral density around 1 has reduced further and uh, we have seen a further dip in the autocorrelation function which are both as per our expectation and in line with the law of large numbers. So, this is about uh, generating white Gaussian noise. The next thing that we will talk about today is how does a sinusoid corrupted by noise look like. So, let us uh, keep our old code or rather let us generate new code. Let me define some terms first. So, xn is the by noise root over gamma j 2 by f by f s n is the nth sample is the nth sample of the sinusoid and Wn. So, we can write it as, so Wn root has variance 1 and power all the value S n also W n is complex Gaussian noise W n is complex Gaussian noise. So, let us look at all of this. So, create a new script. So, let me call this as 
sinusoid in noise. Let me call this crypto sinusoid in noise. So, we will add complex noise to it and happens the we will look at what happens to the real part and the imaginary part fine so let us generate first generate a sin complex sinusoid n equals 1000 is equals two pi. So let me say f equals hundred and f s equals one twenty eight thousand twenty four. this. So, if I look at the real part, this is the real part of S which is a sinusoid. I can uh, reduce the frequency to say 32 and it will be slightly easier to look at still too big maybe 8 would be good enough. So, this, these are 8 cycles within 1024 samples. This is the real part and I can similarly plot the imaginary part and this gives me the imaginary part as expected. So, this is fine. Now, let us generate so, let me see the variance of S is close to 1 actually this is very close to 1 and say I put gamma equals 10 and I multiply this with multiply this with the square root of gamma and run this again and and the variance becomes naturally becomes 10 times. So, the variance or the mean squared value of uh, S is 10. So, now let us generate complex noise. So, W equals random. So, yes this can be cured. say we are doing this for t 1024 and t random uh, let us talk about row vectors only keeping things simple. So, this so this w we know will be a uh, real valued uh, Gaussian random row vector with a variance 1. But now we want to generate complex Gaussian. So, for complex Gaussian we know that or rather we know that z equals x plus j y or z equals x plus j y is a 0 mean circularly symmetric complex Gaussian. If z is 0 mean circularly symmetric complex Gaussian then real Gaussian zero mean variance half real Gaussian zero mean variance half. So, we generate two real Gaussians each with 
mean 0 and variance half to get a complex random variable. So, copy paste this and this say square root of 0 0.5 this so and this generates sinusoid in noise and variance of w is still 0 0.9833 which is close enough and variance of s is 10. So, now if we look at x, so we can say that x equals s plus w. If we treat x as the received signal or so x equals s plus w, then this is the signal of interest. this is noise and variance of s divided by variance of w which incidentally will be equal to gamma is the signal to noise ratio is the signal to noise ratio. So, this is the signal to noise ratio. So, with this let us uh, try to see what we have. So, basically plot real x, we will plot the real value of x and see what do we have. So, this and so we essentially get a slightly noisy version of the sinusoid which is fine, which is uh, what anyway was expected. So, let us actually start at 100 so or a 1000. So, gamma is 1000 or the signal is 1000 times as strong as the noise. So, we get the almost perfect sinusoid. So, let me take this and actually let me keep this here. So, I will put a label here that this is gamma equals 1000 or SNR 30 decibels gamma equals 1000 or SNR equals 30 decibels fine. Then next thing we do is gamma equals 100 or SNR equals 20 decibels and I plot this again. I get a slightly noisier version copy this and I paste it in PowerPoint. this is gamma equals 100 or 20 dB SNR. So far so good, gamma equals 10 or 10 dB SNR, this is naturally much worse as compared to 20 dB, but still we can see a sinusoid. So, this is at 10 dB. 10 and naturally gamma equals 0. I will add a new slide gamma equals 1 gamma equals 0 will not work. So, gamma equals 1 or 0 dB. So, here gamma equals 1 or dB. The signal power or the signal is as strong as the noise. We still see a sinusoid sorry this is the previous one this is the right one copy and I paste it over here. So, the, now we will look at the case where signal is stronger than the noise or where the noise is stronger than the signal gamma equals 0.1. When I see a gamma equals 0 0.1 what have what I get is the noise is 10 times as strong as the signal or as you can see here the noise is totally overwhelming the signal. So, we cannot see the signal at all completely overwhelmed and I will copy this image and paste it here just for reference. So, I paste it here for reference that uh, this is gamma sorry this is gamma equals 0 0.1 or minus 10 dB minus 10 dB SNR. So, now what do we do? Uh, uh, we are in trouble yes we are in trouble 
but uh, we can still be saved. How is that? Let us go back and look at this expression. So, now let us try to find the autocorrelation function. So, let us try to find the autocorrelation and uh, we can show that the autocorrelation function of x. So, assuming the noise to be wide sense stationary, we can show that the autocorrelation function takes this form. So, now let us try to or let us try to interpret this that is that if the noise is white then at lag 0 the autocorrelation function will be sorry, this is L at lag 0 the autocorrelation function will be gamma or will be the signal power plus the noise power and otherwise it will be just a sinusoidal version of the signal. So, how does this help us? Let us uh, find out. So, again let us start with gamma equals 100 for simplicity and what I will do is I will use my code from here and copy my code from here and I will paste it here. So, I do this for I will do this for say 1000 iterations would be good enough. T is different, S w can be. So, S and w are taken from here and what I do is Now, let us see what do we get. So, plot the real value of the autocorrelation function and we are doing this for actually let me do two things plot x and a new figure plot r and let us see what happens. So, this is the corrupted version of x and my bad r has to be this is because of a bad this should be 1. So, r was initialized wrong and now it will should be fine. It's, so, 100 you see that uh, the autocorrelation function is a clean sinusoid averaged over uh, 1000 realizations. Again, you say that uh, this is ok, but uh, what if the signal to noise ratio drops? What if I work at uh, 10 dB SNR? In that case as well, you see that the autocorrelation function at is slightly larger at here, but uh, this is the autocorrelation function as a function of the lag for a 10 dB SNR. So, we get a this averaging is cleaning out the sinusoid by a large extent and say 0 dB, we run this again and now we have started seeing some effects of the noise, but uh, nothing pronounced and even at minus 10 dB that is when the noise is 10 times stronger than the signal, we still get a slightly noisier version of the sinusoid back and to get rid of this noise what we do is we simply average over a larger number of instants. So, if we average over a larger number of instants, we recover a much cleaner version of the sinusoid. So, we can by averaging repeatedly we are still able to recover cleaner version of the sinusoid from noise.
So, this this is how correlation helps us that uh, even if using correlation even if uh, we are looking at a very weak signal we can still try to recover it using its samples. But the question is that uh, how will you get uh, a thousand independent realizations of uh, the same sinusoid. The answer is that uh, we do not need that we do not need a thousand independent realizations we can use ergodicity break the take a lo longer sample length of the signal or of the received signal break, break it down into windows and uh, try to at least recover the base carrier frequency that exists within that sample and uh, that gives us a fair enough idea of the frequency that the signal is working at. This is one idea that is used in synchronization in communication systems quite extensively. So, the key idea over here is that uh, averaging helps us even when the noise is stronger than the signal. So, for the rest of this course we will instead use the inbuilt correlation function. So, I will just quickly demonstrate that. So, we will demonstrate the inbuilt correlation function here. So, x core demo the inbuilt correlation function is called x core and what we will do here is this and this and so we generate so let us say instead of 2 to the power 10 let us say 2 to the power 20. million samples million would be too much. So, let us say 2 to the power 15. So, 32,000 samples close to 32,000 samples. So, and we get this obviously gamma is 0 0.1, but uh, at gamma equals 1. we get this. So, now let us use r equals x core x and plot the real value of r and so this is actually the x core function returns the x core function actually returns this and to find r x x tau or r x x l we have to normalize by dividing with the, this normalizing factor. So, that is why you see that uh, when I use x core there is a peak in the middle and then it uh, degrades as we move away from the center, but uh, by normalizing we can get rid of this problem and say I say gamma equals 10. You see that the peak at 0 the peak at lag 0 will weaken significantly, but uh, in order to get rid of those edges what we do is we in order to get rid of uh, the sides we have to denormalize using this fraction. But uh, regardless for the rest of this course we will use the inbuilt autocorrelation function or x core in MATLAB and uh, uh, some practical signals that are corrupted by noise and where we will use all of these properties are images, speech, climate data, econometric indices. Out of these, these are the type of signals we want to communicate 
mostly. So, these are the type of signals that we want to communicate mostly. So, in the forthcoming chapters, we will look at uh, how can we use the ideas that about random processes for speech and images and we will also look at some generative models for uh, these signals. So, in the forthcoming lectures, we will spend some time talking about uh, the generative models for uh, random processes, which means AR processes or, or autoregressive processes, moving average processes, autoregressive moving of average processes and then we will spend some time discussing Markov chains. So, that is all for now. Thank you. Thank you.